In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a paleo and AIP friendly holiday feast, including how to make a lot of it ahead of time. So all you have to do on the day of is put it in the oven. This fully AIP elimination phase compliant dinner consists of a tasty rosemary and garlic beef roast, a side of roasted Brussels sprouts and apples, a delicious sweet potato casserole with a sweet crunchy topping, a hands-off spiced apple and cranberry cabbage dish, and to finish, a stunning no-bake salted carob tart. You can get any of the recipes I share today, plus 26 more in my AIP Holiday Recipes book, which you can get at the link in the description. The recipes I'm sharing today serve approximately six to eight people, or four people with leftovers. The first thing I did was to roast the sweet potatoes, as they'll take an hour in the oven. Simply poke some holes in four medium-sized sweet potatoes with a fork, place on a baking sheet, and then place in a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven for one hour. While those were roasting, I made the salted carob tart. This is a no-bake dessert that stores well in the freezer, so you can make this several days ahead of time if desired. To make this, you'll first make the base. In a food processor, put one quarter cup of melted coconut oil, a half cup of coconut flour, two tablespoons of carob powder, three cups of pitted soft dates, this is about 12 ounces, one half teaspoon of sea salt, one tablespoon maple syrup, and one tablespoon water. Process until the mixture comes together and sticks together when pinched. Pour the mixture out into a nine inch tart pan or pie pan. Also a tip, I didn't do this, but I think it would be easier to slice and cut if you put parchment paper down first, as it can be quite sticky. Then using your hands, flatten the mixture against the bottom and sides of the pan. Put into the freezer while you prepare the filling. You'll need to use the food processor again, but I don't bother washing it out in between because it's for the same recipe. So into the bowl of the food processor, add the flesh of two ripe avocados, two tablespoons melted coconut oil, quarter cup maple syrup, a quarter cup coconut milk, four tablespoons of carob powder, and a pinch of sea salt. Process until smooth and creamy, then pour into the prepared tart pan over your base and then smooth with a spatula. Put it back in the freezer to set while you prepare everything else. To make the rosemary garlic paste for the beef tenderloin, mince three cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of fresh rosemary, and mix in a bowl with one tablespoon of olive or avocado oil and one teaspoon of sea salt. You can now store this mixture in a container in the fridge for up to three days. Or if you're making the meal to serve tonight, take the beef tenderloin out of the fridge, fold any tapered ends over and secure with kitchen twine. This enables the roast to cook evenly. The tenderloin I used was pretty evenly sized, so I did not have to do this. Rub the rosemary garlic paste all over the roast and then let the roast sit out at room temperature for one hour. Next, I prepared the spiced apple and cranberry cabbage dish. For this, you'll need to core and shred one half of a red cabbage and then add to a large bowl. To the bowl, also add one cup of fresh cranberries, then core and dice an apple. I don't bother peeling them, but you can if you prefer. A quarter cup of raisins, 1.5 tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of maple syrup, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one half teaspoon of mace spice, one quarter teaspoon sea salt, and one quarter cup water. Mix everything up and then place in a large baking dish. At this point, you can cover it with plastic wrap for storing up to three days in the fridge, or you can put it in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Next up, I prepared the Brussels sprouts and apple side dish. Cut off the tough ends of two pounds of Brussels sprouts and then slice them into two and place in a large bowl. If you find a particularly large one, you can cut it into even more pieces. Then core and dice the apples. Finally, dice up two shallots and then put them all in the bowl as well. Finally, add one half teaspoon sea salt and one quarter cup of melted bacon fat. We love the taste of bacon fat best, but you can also use a quarter cup of avocado oil, melted coconut oil, or olive oil if you prefer. Give it all a good mix, and at this point, you can cover it with plastic wrap or transfer to another container for storage in the fridge for up to three days, or directly to a baking sheet if you're going to cook it immediately. You'll roast this at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. When the sweet potatoes are done roasting, take them out of the oven and let sit for a few minutes to cool. When they're to a point where you can actually touch them without burning yourself, remove the skins and put the flesh into a large bowl. 
To the bowl, also add one teaspoon cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon mace, one teaspoon sea salt, and two tablespoons maple syrup or honey. Use a potato masher or hand mixer to mash the potatoes and to mix the spices in. Mash until mostly smooth, with just a few chunks. Transfer the potatoes to a baking dish and spread evenly. Then make the topping by adding 3 quarters cup of sliced tiger nuts and 1 half cup of crunchy banana chips to a bowl, and then breaking the chips up with your hands into small pieces. I'll leave a link in the description for two AIP friendly banana chip brands. Both Bear and Gerbs make preservative and sugar free banana chips. Add an eighth to a quarter cup of coconut sugar and one quarter cup of avocado, coconut, or olive oil to the bowl and mix everything thoroughly. Then sprinkle evenly over the sweet potatoes. At this point, you can cover the baking dish with plastic wrap and store in the fridge for up to three days. Or if you're making it right now, put it in the oven for 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. And a note, if you're baking it straight from the fridge, it may take more like 30 to 40 minutes. Now, if you've made the entire meal a day or two ahead of time, this is how I'd cook it. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have two ovens, set one to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Take out the beef roast, coat it with a rosemary garlic paste and let it sit out. Then put the spiced apple and cranberry cabbage dish in the oven that is set at 425 degrees and set a timer for 30 minutes. While that's cooking, pour the Brussels sprouts out from the storage container onto a baking sheet. Put the beef tenderloin on a baking rack in a roasting pan or in a baking dish. And when the timer goes off, put the sweet potato casserole and Brussels sprouts in the oven with the cabbage. And take the cabbage out and give it a good stir. Put it back in the oven and cook for an additional 30 minutes. And then you'll put the beef tenderloin in the oven set at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and set a timer for 20 minutes. If you do not have a separate oven, put it in the oven with the other items at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 25 minutes. Once the timer for the beef is done, check the temperature with an instant read thermometer. It should read at least 120 degrees Fahrenheit for medium rare. If it's not there yet, put it back in the oven for 5 minute increments until it is there. Then take it out and let it rest for 10 minutes before slicing and serving. And finally, remove the salted carob tart from the freezer approximately 15 minutes before you serve it. Remove it from the pan and slice it immediately upon removing from the freezer though, as it gets increasingly harder to remove as it thaws. If you desire, sprinkle with some large flake sea salt as well. Again, you can get any of the recipes I shared today, plus 26 more in my AIP Holiday Recipes book. It includes recipes for holiday favorites like gingerbread scones, a cranberry and pineapple sauce, bacon mac and cheese, stuffed acorn squash, molasses cookies, and even an eggless eggnog, plus many more recipes. I also give alternatives for many ingredients, such as coconut products, in the recipes as well. This book is available for a small fee, and I'll put the link below in the description so you can grab that and make your holiday stress-free and absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoyed following along as I cook this holiday feast and are inspired to go make your own as well. Happy holidays.